Hello guys, Winston here. In my last video, I showed you how to put together the structure of a Shape Oko 3. This week, I'll be getting my machine operational and testing it with a project. I'm going to be covering and commenting on a lot of loosely related topics, so for the sake of not confusing you, I'm going to do something different and put a clickable table of contents on one side of the screen. The first thing you'll have to come to terms with once you have an assembled Shape Oko 3 is how to control it. The best way to do this is with the free Carbide Motion software. To get started, plug in your USB cable, turn on your power supply, and launch Carbide Motion. I occasionally found that turning on the DC power supply caused the board to reset, so I just made a point to flip the switch into the on position before hitting connect. Once you've connected to your machine, the choices you have are pretty straightforward. You can either load a program or manually jog the machine. There are some other things you can do with keyboard shortcuts like open up a command line interface or a communication log, but 99% of the time you'll be fine in the standard GUI. Before you start tearing apart the program, I want to remind you that the software is in beta. If you'd like, you can head over to the Carbide forums and make your voices heard if you have an idea to improve the software. For jogging the machine, you can select various increments or choose a continuous speed. You can also reset zero from this window or program in known offsets. It's here that the Carbide team has deviated from some of the old ways of dealing with the coordinate system. They moved offset management from the gerbil board into the software. I'm going to guess that this was to allow them to do more advanced things like homing and tool probing with the Nomad. Although this means that the Carbide team has a lot more freedom to explore advanced features, it also means that some of your CNC workflow staples like Universal G-Code Sender are still playing catch-up, at least as far as I could tell. UGS was recently updated to accept the Shape Oko 3's custom header string when connecting over serial, but as of version 1.0.8, it looks like Carbide's offset management method has yet to be made fully compatible with the latest stable build. All you can do is some basic jogging through the UI and sending strings over the command line. However, if you're a little more daring, I've been told that the nightly 2.0 build works a lot better with the Shape Oko 3. That version and Carbide Motion will be your best bets for sending G-code. Back to the main subject of getting your Shape Oko 3 operational though, let's talk about gerbil parameters. Take everything you did with the Shape Oko 2 and throw it out the window. The Carbide board comes pre-programmed with all the necessary settings to run your machine. There is an asterisk after that statement however, the settings are only valid for one quarter micro-stepping, not one eighth. Make sure your micro switches on your board are either set for quarter stepping or change your gerbil parameters to reflect double the number of steps per millimeter. So what do you do once you get your machine moving? The most obvious choice is to run some sort of hello world program, and you're more than welcome to do so. You can use the program from the Shape Oko 2 setup. That sounded quite boring to me, so instead I jumped straight into a project I've wanted to try for quite some time now, making a vacuum table. More specifically, I've been thinking about all the people I've seen trying to make them by hand and end up struggling when it comes time to tediously drill out the prodigiously perforated surface of their vacuum tables. The most recent victim of this in my YouTube viewing history is Bob from I Like To Make Stuff. You could of course use pegboard for this part, but I think a series of tiny, closely spaced holes is better if you have a weaker vacuum. It also prevents dimpling in your vacuum formed sheet. Usually this area is considered waste, but if you're trying to make inserts for packaging or need a flat flange for secondary machining operations, you may want the entire formed sheet to come out of the process as smooth as possible. Anyhow, the solution to the tedium of drilling out your own vacuum table is obviously to CNC it. To machine all of my vacuum table holes without changing tools, I'd need to use my 1 16th inch end mill, and unfortunately I wouldn't be able to do that on my DWP611 without a third party 1 8th inch collet. They're not terribly expensive, but I'd just never gotten around to ordering one. So instead, to save time, I cut out some spacers I could use on my quiet cut spindle with the Shape Oko 3. Yeah, I know this is kind of an awkward reunion of Inventables and the Shape Oko brand, but c'est la vie. The DWP611 has a nominal outer diameter of 69mm versus the Quiet Cut's 58. These plywood spacers fill the gap in the Shape Oko 3's spindle mount so I can use the smaller Quiet Cut. The next thing to do was to figure out how to secure my work pieces to the waste board. As most of you know, I'm a big fan of threaded inserts. The only problem with using them on the Shape Oko 3's table was that you can't slide the MDF panels around because they're bolted to the base frame straps. There are a lot of work holding positions around the perimeter of your waste board that you're going to have trouble getting to if you try and use your CNC to mill out the holes. Fortunately, there's an easy way to drill out the holes manually. Use a 5 16th inch drill bit followed by a countersink bit to accommodate the flange if your threaded inserts have them. I didn't have time to install a full pattern of threaded inserts, so I put in the bare minimum needed to secure the most common material size I use, 1 square foot panels. I also drew in lines to mark out the maximum cutting area of the machine. I'm going to gloss over the design of my vacuum table since that'll be next week's video, but from here on out everything went as you'd expect. I got my pieces cut out, glued together, and tested. 
With very little in the manner of fine tuning, I got my Shape Elko 3 cutting just as well as its older sibling. The mechanical capabilities you'd expect are all there. And that's all I have for this video. You'll have to wait until the next one to see how this vacuum forming experiment worked out. And oh yeah, that plywood form you see on the vacuum table was indeed a 3D job run on my Shape Elko 3. So if you're worried about whether or not the belt driven Z axis can do vertical contours with reasonable resolution, the answer is yes. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll be back in a week or three.